uh, call the special early select board meeting January 6th to order. Um, uh, let's see, addition to changes to the agenda, none. Uh, public comment, hearing none. Fiscal year 22 budget discussion. So, um, you can buy down if you basically uh, if you buy down the two loans Brad, the truck, Brad I'm gonna Brad I'm gonna pull up a hopefully I'm gonna pull up a, uh, something for us to look at here um, for that uh, um, the because really we haven't had much discussion on that um, The, um, uh, I gotta pull it up here. So I, uh, I, I, I'd like to talk about, I, I think John asked for at the last budget meeting uh, and we sent out, it was what expenditures were increased that really are fixed. So we sent that, uh, Diane put together a spreadsheet for you all uh, on that. It's FY22 budget expenditures increases and it, Starts in the upper left with wages for the town administrator. Are we are we discussing the items, or are we just all open in the document right now? What what's, what's I just I just right? put I just put it on the screen now, John. So oh, okay, it's coming up now. My internet appears to be a little delayed tonight for some reason. My finding it was more delayed than your internet. So. Okay. So I I know I think it was you, John, that asked for this, and Diane put it together. You could see where these are really fixed costs that, that you have little control over. Um, workers comp, I mean, workers comp, we have some control over, but um, likely the only one on here that we have much control over, any control over. How do we have control over that? Can you just explain that? To well, it's workers comp, you just, you know, I think we need to do a better job at safety training, uh, uh, make employees, you know, aware of uh, safe practices. I think we need to do a, an, a, an audit of our shop. I don't know if there's ever been an audit of, a, of our shop done, looking for uh, you know, potential hazards. And I know there's a, a, a bunch of training for uh, especially the highway folks with respect to flagging and lifting and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I just, I don't have a real good comfort level on what we're doing. Um, uh, Tim, uh, Tim's on the, on the uh, call here, so he, may, he can weigh uh, probably more into what training that, that they are doing. And the same thing on the, on the police side of the, of, the, of the business, you know, there's, uh, I the training that we could do for those officers as well to make them aware of hazard situations, how to avoid them, and how we improve them.
We good with this? Is my mic on? Yes. The M window don't come back up. Could someone explain the, the anticipated increase with Northfield? Uh, the town of Northfield also does our ambulance service. So um, I know that Barrytown is 7% and normally Northfield, will, you know, they usually go up one or 2% a year too. So some of our residents are, you know, in the Northfield, you know, they're closer to Northfield. So the Northfield ambulance works with them. Right. And we're, so we're expecting them to increase their service by 8%? No, one. See, the Berry Town is 7%. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So it's Berry Town that doesn't seem to be controlling their costs as well. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think what you see, see that they had a, then the subsequent years they came down off of that uh, pretty significantly. Um, but again, the, 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 our first year was was higher, right? And under the police wages, it just for reason says fill shifts four percent, thirty three thousand or almost thirty four thousand dollars. What what do you mean by fill shifts? Okay, so uh, the way that James was you know telling me about that is that um, especially if people are on vacation or if for COVID, if they're out on COVID, then we have to have overtime people come in or you know, people that we doing overtime or um, have to get uh, part-time people to come in and fill those shifts. But, so that's but what I, he was I saying. guess my confusion is, is we have line items for both of those things. And it, it was my understanding for the most part, when you look at an eight man roster, the part-time was to cover really for, for the most part, those, those types of things. Yeah, and and we do have an over we do have a over overtime line item that has money in it as well. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't speak directly with James on this, but I'm going to speculate that it's we, we're going to be entering to a new contract for uh, fiscal year 22. That, that that may be what his thought was as well. I that's something I you know I don't know for sure, but I'm just speculating. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping he would be here at the meeting. I did invite him to it. So. Well, he, he said that if we need him, I could, we should text him and he'll join, so. Okay. I understand the rest of the items. Brad, Justin, Flo, are you guys good with this one? Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about. I understand it too. The only thing that I would question too is, is there any fluctuation there under the police wages? And then is the health insurance, is there any um, room for, you know, difference there? Well, on the health insurance, if people go from um, like the new town administrator, for instance, I'm assuming he's going to be on family plan. If he's not, then that would go down. So if people change in their plans, just that we have more people on the family plan now than ever, because a I couple see. of the police, uh, they were on either one person or two person and they had children. So now they're on family plans. Okay. So that's the big difference. So. So here's a question for you, Diane. Mm -hmm. um, how did we end up with such a big surplus last year in the general fund? In the general fund, uh, we had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. We had not anticipated, uh, so we had loan a or revenue. A grant, Diane? Was it a grant uh, or a loan? Was it there's a grant? also grant, uh, but okay. there was the hundred fifty thousand dollars for the loan that we had not anticipated, which is a plus. And um, like I said, there's uh, grants in there as well. Plus we underestimated the revenues, uh, partially because of the grants. Um, and then uh, their expenditures were not as high. There was a lot of things, like when we started into COVID uh, in March, I think that we were, I think at one point we were saying, let's not, if we don't have to do something, let's not spend the money. So in other words, if we don't have to repair this road, if we don't, if there's something that doesn't have to be done, then let's not do it. And I think that Dana really did make the effort to make certain that we didn't spend all of the um, expenditures that we had. 
So that's why we ended up with such a big surplus. Okay. And ha have you looked, if we didn't have those grants, if we didn't have the grants and, and loan, would, do you know roughly what our surplus would have been? Uh, let's see, when I was looking at it, I would say that it probably would have been still 100,000. Another question I had, Diane, is in terms of abatements. So uh -huh. later we'll be discussing the potential abatement for the next five years for the Grange. Mm -hmm. How would that affect us if the, the, it was not approved to abate? How would that offset the budget per se? Okay. It, um, I'm just saying it's not, it wouldn't really offset the budget because what happens with that? Okay, like that's the floor vote five years ago and they approved it and then uh, the municipal portion plus the school portion uh, at that point was abated. So what happens is the school portion of it goes, uh, it's, there's a formula when we fill up, there's a 411 report when they do the grand list and then when we do the taxes. And that portion of the school is actually spread out amongst all of us. If you look, there's the municipal rate and right underneath it is um, another rate. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's uh, for the vet, it's mostly for the veterans, okay. uh, for the veterans that we end up paying uh, for the additional monies that they have. In other words, a veteran, if he's totally disabled, can get $10,000 from the state. The town has approved an additional 30,000. So for those few people that are in there and for that school portion, uh, that money is in, um, that puts, gets billed back to each one of us residents. And I think it's a point zero 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 eight is the amount. And so there's the, um, there's the municipal rate and then there's this rate. And I just can't remember the name of it for the life of me right now. But it's, it's in our, uh, it's on the tax bill. So that's what happens with that. Okay, thank you. Yep. So it doesn't, it wouldn't, Imp it wouldn't positively impact this budget, but it would it would positively no. impact each it's, of the it'll, parcel you owners. Pay for it at the time the tax bills are sent out. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move over. Good job in forecasting and looking at the future and and looking at where you can, you know, do potential cuts. And I appreciate that. I'm going to pull up a, another sheet here if we're all ready to move off of this one. Mm -hmm. So Brad, this is where, where yeah. you started. Um, you get, this is a spreadsheet that Diane and I put together. You'll see in the, in the middle line uh, of brackets up there, the total expenditures on 12, 30, 20. That's, that's the last time we met. And you can see that there was uh, uh, FY22 expenses of $3.4 million, which equated to a 5.9% increase year, year over year. Um, so there was, you, Folks had some discussion. I think Justin brought it up about can we can we uh, uh, buy down some debt the next day, Diane, and uh, ask the questions to to the auditors, and I'll let uh, I'll let her answer those questions uh, what they said. But uh, it, it, so uh, we looked at the, the possibility of buying down two loans, and that's in that lower section, and it's particularly where it's highlighted in in yellow. Uh, if, if we bought down two loans, if there's an FY25 truck loan and it's, there's the new grader, I, I think that goes through FY32, uh, uh, that the, the grader that we just bought. If, if, we, if the town bought out those two loans to the tune of $376,000, they would reduce the annual budget by $61,729. And if, if you all did that, that's reflected up above in total expenditures on one six twenty one, 
of 330, uh, $3,400,000, which would bring the year-over-year -year increase to 4.06%. What um, the benefit, in, in my mind's eye, of buying down debt is that it, this is just not an improvement for FY22. The, the uh, nearly $32,000 there in, the, in that um, truck buy down would take select board through uh, FY25. So, so in effect, you are improving future budgets by doing this and the greater loan, and I think it's FY32. Um, so you'd see an improvement of nearly $30,000 a year for the next um, nine years. Uh, so you, so you, by buying down debt, you improve all, not only F the FY22 the next year, but also future years budgets. Um, and you can see Diane has a little block there that starts FY22 on uh, on designated fund balance, 931,000. Their select board has an obligation out there of FY. 21 tax buy down of 100,000. If you all agree to these loans, it's 376,000, which would leave a, a balance in your undesignated funds of $450,000. I thought the number was higher when we just got our audit numbers uh, than the 931. But I know, I know, Diane, you like to keep you say you feel comfortable with the, the four or five hundred thousand dollars. My question before was that if we say we utilized this, say we had zero in there and we have trucks that are paid for, um, we used and something urgent came up, there is an option to possibly finance those trucks and, and replenish some of that cash. You said and it happens fairly quick. Um, why wouldn't why wouldn't we consider more and then putting in a, like a cap, like an equipment, capital equipment or, or fund or something along with the budget while we're looking at this. Well, I guess um, if an emergency to buy a piece of equipment would be great, but what if we had um, some type of natural disaster where it wasn't equipment, it was some other repair that, we, you know, potentially we could go to, um, you know, a bank to get a loan, but it wouldn't be an equipment loan. It would just be different. So I guess I look at that as not for buying equipment as much as if there's right. a disaster for like a road or something. So there's no way we could pay this debt, pay other debt down and then fi refinance a truck, say that was paid off to, for an emergency. Oh, like yes, we could do that. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we could refinance. Right, and then use that money in the emergency. Yeah, scenario. we could do that. Yeah. But in the meantime, you know, you could probably budget for you know an equipment fund and things like that so that we were building into that so we're heading in the right direction um the well, she, uh, ha she does have a capital budget in here justin yeah okay. 250,000 i'm sorry diane yes it enough. is 250. but with that said uh that 250 will probably all be used up for the match for the Paying uh, for the Fisher Road culvert loan, which was two hundred and thirty some thousand dollars, that the town would have to come up as the the twenty percent uh, loan match. Right. There were a couple, uh, two or three other loans, which had much shorter uh, debts to them, and that because they were nearly paid off, but we took the two. Uh, once we took the two loans that had the, the, the most debt service and in the turn the longer, longer. So what were the shorter term loans? What were the ones with the smaller amounts? Was that just curious? Two trucks, two other trucks. Yep. And I think that they are gonna end in 2022. I believe the other two do. So we have two truck payments ending in 2022? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, are those roughly $30,000 a year in payments? Um, let me see. Well, one of them is like 15,000 and the other's 30. So probably about 45,000. 
That's good. Thank you. What are the interest rates, Diane, on the truck and the grader if we do the loans buy down? What are the current interest rates? Oh, let's see. Um, I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe that the greater loan is under 2%. And the others, I think I had one, it was 2.05, and the okay. others are right around that. So there's nothing over 2.05%. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out why you guys weren't listening to me. My, I was on mute for the, I couldn't find the mute button. Um, <laughs> so if we, if we drew our rainy day fund for, le for lack of a better term, down to 400,000, we could potentially pay off those other two smaller loans that you talked about as well, bringing it down another percentage point, right? Um, well, they're already in there to pay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, put that in that loop. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't be reoccurring next year so it's not like it would pop back up and bite us in the rear end right so yeah i'm just thinking of you know ways to get us down to you know a palatable uh percentage of increase and you know we're i think you know if the board was to agree on what's proposed here we'd be down to about four percent but if you paid off those two lower you know the the small loans too you'd still have $400,000 balance and you'd buy down an extra point there. So you'd really be down to 3% at that point. I mean, which is, it's getting there. Is that, you, is that right, Diane, or am I thinking about it wrong? No, I think that you are thinking about it correctly. You know, I'd want to double check to see exactly how much we owe on these and I don't have that right here. Um, but I am predicting it's like, you know, under, It'd probably be like thirty-seven or thirty-eight thousand with interest, I believe, to pay off both of those. Yeah. What what you could do outside of buying down those two short-term notes now is, is just take that same dollars, John, and and apply it to the to the t FY22 tax rate, similar similarly as you folks had did for 2021 by putting one hundred one thousand towards the tax rate. As 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 long as the it was the end of the loan, right? So correct. We that's correct. Back up next year. That's, that's correct. The difference. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Right. The only difference would be if we paid it off earlier, we save a little bit in interest, but it's not significant, I'm guessing. It would be very little. Yeah. It, and, and, and that way, I, I, I'm not quite sure when you apply that money, but since we haven't applied the 2021 yet, I'm assuming you're going to apply that in June. Uh, I don't know. So, so if you, you, you in effect have 18 months, they'll still hold on to that money and do something with the, the cash if you don't buy down. See, see what I see what I'm asking, Diane. You ha you have in here. Okay, that what, so that um, I guess the rate, the tax rate buy down is that we're thinking that um, if if we were to spend everything in the uh, FY21 budget and get all of our revenues the way that we projected, then yeah, it would be 101,600. However, um, if we have more revenues than we determined and we don't spend as much money, then we won't be dig we won't be getting to that 101,600. It might be something less than that. How are we tracking? We're six months into revenue. How are we tracking? Are we tracking on on track, behind track, oh, or boy. ahead of the As I was starting to look at it, yeah, we were just like at the halfway point in most of things. I don't I see that. where we really went over in too many things right now. So, but uh, what I'm saying is, it is, is are your revenues tracking true to the budget, or are they higher than what you had in the budget, or, or lower the budget? Okay, so higher. so there maybe there is a likelihood that you won't need the entire hundred and one thousand or so. So, so is this is the suggestion, however, either loan loan take out these loans or apply uh, uh, towards FY22 
tax rate buy down to get this to 3%? I like that personally. I'd like to hear from others, but I mean, that gets us to, to a 3% increase, um, which is, which we're getting there. I, I, I think, you know, and as you said, uh, Tom, you know, those, those two, those two loans that we're looking at now here, that's going to, you know, help us in future years as well, which is, I, I think, you know, Huge. every taxpayer yeah. will understand. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, right. so if we if we take and buy down down to the point of uh, four hundred thousand, and you, uh, Diane, you're estimating about another hundred thousand surplus at the end of the uh, at the end of I'm the not, fiscal year. FY twenty one. I don't know the surplus. If there's going to be a surplus, I don't know what it would be. No, I think when, when was Tom that? was asking me, we were talking about the FY21 rate uh, tax uh, buy down, the 101,000. That's correct. And I'm hoping that we won't use that up, but I don't know. I really I have you. no way of knowing, and especially we don't know what winter is going to bring. Yeah. It could conceivably be worse than that. Or, but but I, is that a maximum yeah. number? Is the 101,000 a maximum number, Diane? Yeah. Okay. I mean, for the for the town of this size and the budget of this size, I feel pretty comfortable with having a, a four hundred thousand dollar rainy day fund. I, I think that's a pretty good number. Diane, you're more of the expert in this area, but I mean, I no, I'm fine with that. And the thing is, we are starting to build up um, that. Well, I'm, I want to build up that two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. If we can, you know, if we can start building that up as well that's going to really help us out a lot more in the future because then we will have something to fall back on for equipment or but, maybe an emergency. But remember in FY22, we are going to consume that entire, two, nearly that entire $250,000 for the Fisher Road culvert um, match, right? Yeah. I think, well, I'm, no, we, I was talking to you earlier. I think number one, we have some reserve money. And then I think in FY21, I'm going to have some money. I would really like to bring that up at the next board meeting and discuss the, um, because I do think that we, with FY21, what I, what I want to reserve and what we have in the reserves, I think that we're going to be, we're going to be able to meet that $264,000 unless, you know, unless we buy another piece of equipment or we have another capital expenditure. And I think we're in a pretty good stead, and I agree with Diane. And I'm going to play devil's advocate in terms of I'm just wondering what would occur if we were to take another hundred thousand from the four hundred thousand, bring it down to three hundred thousand, and drop the interest rate another percent. How do people feel about that? Well, you're not dropping the interest rate a percent; you're dropping the tax rate. Yes, that's what I meant. I think I think we're getting to the point where we would want to actually at that point start looking at each individual budget. Um, because I mean, we're buying it down. But I think the individual budgets would have to be more looked at at that point. That's just my opinion. I'm not sure how everybody else feels. No, I think that's a good point. And that's something that I was thinking of too. And I think everyone's done a really good job of paring down their budgets in many different forms. Um, there are a few places that I think they could be pared down a little more, but it's really hard to know. And I think Diane does a fabulous job in looking at um, where it's best and where we need to be more proactive. Yeah, I mean, I think the heads of each department definitely know if, if where they would make budget reductions if they were, were going to. Um, we certainly wouldn't know that. They're the professionals in that area for sure. Absolutely. Um, and I, I personally, I mean, I think we're getting there, but and I feel like we've made a lot of progress for the town, but I, I do agree where you'd like to see it a little bit lower flow if possible. I, I'd almost like to know if there was, I'd just like to know we squeezed everything out of the budget we could. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, I've learned this lesson the hard way a little bit in, in past years. 
um, to squeeze every little bit. Um, I know what you're saying, Justin. I think, um, you know, being at 3%, I think we could, I think, you know, I'm interested in your thoughts on if we, if we send it back to the department heads to look at, um, you know, some, some of the departments, one of the departments that's sticking out in my mind is fairly high. Can we come up with another percent? I mean, what are your thoughts? I'd like to see that. That's that's kind of where I was going with that after Flo's comment. Yeah, and I think that's exactly where Flo's going. Um, and Flo, I'm not. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's where you're getting to is the two percent mark. Is that right? I would be very comfortable with a two percent increase for the town, um, based on what we've talked about here. To kind of, I think. Uh, run our budget better with our loans and, and everything and maybe tighten up a little bit with the uh the department heads if we could get another one percent from each of them i think we'd be able to do we'd be moving right along and we'd be good so there was a mention john you mentioned a department so well in, in, uh, in my mind i you know the only one and and it's not fair because he's not here um, and we didn't ask him any questions, um, but the police department was still at a 7% increase. Um, and that's the only budget that, you know, I, I'm looking at that's still, I think that's the highest one out of all of them. And that, that's the one I was referring to. I'm not talking about slashing and burning police department budgets or anything like that. But I mean, if we could, if we could get get it down a little bit to, you know, a 7% increase is a lot, especially when we're only growing revenues by a half a percent, um, you know, through tr traditional measures, according to the spreadsheet. Um, you know, I want to give the chief every opportunity to, you know, make corrections in the department, but 7% is a lot um, in one year. Um, and, and that's the area that, you know, I, I was, I was looking at, um, where you were referring to Brad uh, excuse me uh, Tom well I just just my when we went through the the uh, police chief hiring process we had a couple professionals on that hiring committee as you recall and 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 they really called into the question some uh, what they expressed was inadequate funding for yeah. for training and such and so my sense of of, of uh, James's budget is a, is a good bit of that increase is is there, and uh, ha having a, a full complement of officers, which my, my sense I I haven't been really involved in the police. We really haven't had for a long time, and and um, so so I, I'm just I'm hesitant to to tr try to pull that away when when you know we learn I think we learned a hard lesson during the that those interview processes so uh, yeah that's my only concern and, yeah it's, it certainly shed some good light on the things that we weren't doing and that we should do I'm just I guess my only thought is is do it you know and we're I'm not saying we are trying to but if you know we can't do it all in one year right right it has to be over yeah. multiple years yeah and you know are we is is that really what we need in the first year um you know i i know uh tim went back and and shaved his budget more um the roads are something that everyone used uh 10 percent of the population uses the police department right it's the 10 percent. you know they keep us all safe they keep 100 percent of us safe but it's really you know 10 percent of the population get all the calls um so, so one percent is about thirty-four thousand dollars here, um, and um, I'd like to see if the police could bring their budget down to more in the four percent, as opposed to seven percent increase. That's my thinking. Well, again, the devil's in the detail. Um, uh, How about 
how about my and you don't have you don't have uh, are there specific line items that the select board had had issues? yeah so i'm not going to get into line items yeah. uh, okay I, I, okay. I can't, I can't, I mean. Right, just, okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, so give us a couple days, all right? And we will, we'll sit down with James and, and see what we, we can produce. Um, so, so just, just to make sure we're all on the same page, the select board members, are you all in agreement that we can get down to 3% uh, with the, conditions that we've talked about paying off those two big loans uh, paying off the two or buying down the tax rate to get rid of those small loans that should bring us down to about three percent ish and then sending the uh, the town administrator and Diane back to uh, see if we can find one more percent to get us down to two is that the direction we're giving just so we're all on the same page I agree. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. And and I just I'll just add a a, a reason to to keep a, a a rainy day fund. And we saw that sort of manifested here in the last six months. Is especially with with the new town center, there's going to be I think a significantly uh, increased availability of potential grants for for the town nearly all grants require some sort of match. And yep. so if, if you don't have a match, you don't have a grant. So that, that's that's a reason not to completely defund your rainy day fund. Right, I, I think 400,000 is a, a oh. good number. Well, I agree with you. I, I mean, there was talk about going down another 100,000 or something in 2000. I, that's all I'm saying. I, yeah, I think-, I, I think That's why we need to see some budget changes. Yeah. That's all. That, that we, we absolutely need it. Yeah, I think I think you know it's reasonable, two percent increase um, with the pressures we're facing. Um, anyone that watches the meetings will will certainly appreciate that we got it down to two percent, um, and we did it in a in a you know good fiscally conservative way. You know, we're not just passing the buck; we're we're making good moves. Absolutely, and looking at it in a thoughtful way too. As are everyone, we appreciate everything that folks have been doing to look at their budgets and decrease where they can. So, so let us go back and we'll have those conversations this week and we'll hopefully send something to you folks for your consideration by Friday. That'd be great. Excellent, thank you. I'm gonna move on to the Grange if everybody's okay with that. Yeah. So this is, um, I, I put in my notes to everyone that uh, five years ago that the um, Grange came and offered an article and it, I think it was approved at the floor at town meeting. It was. Um, okay, to, to abate uh, uh, the property tax for the Capital City Grange and uh, at the floor that was voted by the on approved by the constituents uh, the, the the issue with that is that the uh, town meeting uh, folks voters don't have a right to uh, abate school tax they, they technically can only abate the municipal uh, property tax and so in effect for the last five years the uh, as Diane mentioned earlier in the call, that the individual property owners uh, have been, in effect, paying the, the, the school tax for the Grange as, as part of higher school tax, uh, which is to the, to the tune, Rosemary gave some numbers, about $5,000, $5,200 a year. So she received an article basically asking for the same uh, consideration for the next five years from the Grange. She edited that article to read, as you see on the screen, where she took out, uh, she added uh, municipal property tax, where before it was just property tax. Uh, and with this article, the uh, 
the only uh, debt that the town would would assume or abate is about twenty two hundred dollars of municipal tax. Um, she, she also went on to say, is if that whatever the select board druthers are, if it's if it's her wording here, or conceivably you could say no, we're not going to do any abatement on any taxes. Uh, that sh she would need to go back to the Grange and let them know your decision because they have they have the ability to petition uh, to get to get on uh, whatever they want onto the onto the ballot. So again, this is what Rosemary is is suggesting is that we that the town agree to abate the municipal portion about. $2,200, uh, but not the school portion of it. Yeah, $2,200, and the, she estimates the school tax was about $5,800. $5,838. $5,838. I mean, just just from my perspective, I have no problem with them putting it on the ballot and letting the voters decide. The full I, stop, the full stop, John, or or. Well, I I would rather not, but I'm I'm fairly cheap. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, I'm fiscally conservative, and I, I and I'm not a resident of the town, but if this was my town, I would I would want to say. The municipal portion. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's definitely fair to place it on the but on the ballot for sure. Um, I'm not in favor of it um, in terms of um, another five years of abating it, but that's just my own personal opinion, but I have no problem with it being placed on the ballot in terms of the municipal. Just the municipal flow, not yeah, the I school mean, piece. I mean, to expand, I, I agree with you, Flo, um, and that that's the whole reason for saying, you know, or for me saying, you know, let, let's put it on the ballot. I mean, if, if people want to eat that on their tax bills or, you know, pay more to uh, offset that, then that's what the community decides, but I want to make sure that they decide on that and not us, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you are you more comfortable editing this even further to a period less than five years? I would be comfortable with going less than five years as well. Um, I think um, five years is a long time and they definitely do a lot for the town. By no means do I think less of um, everything that they've done. It's just that I think in this time when we need to look at being more fiscally conservative, et cetera, I just am not a proponent of it this time. One year, two years? How do other people feel? I would say one year, but I'm up for discussion. Doesn't cost anything to put it on the ballot next year, does it? No, not at all. No, and and just where we are with everything, I, I think one year is fine. I, I I have no problems doing it just for one year. Mike, so these guys are they not a five hundred one c three? I I can only assume so, Jessica, but I don't know for sure. I'm not certain as well. Aren't they the only? I'm not, I'm not hearing half this. Aren't they the only? Nonprofit or whatever that comes to us and does this. I'm aware of, yeah, they're the only ones that have come. Yeah, I was just wondering why that yeah, was. That's all. Yeah, I've never seen anybody else. They, they must not be a, a, a tax, uh, property tax exempt organization then. And they've always been wonderful about offering up their facility as it's stated here in this. Uh, documentation that Rosemary put forward, but now given 
COVID-19 and the pandemic that we're in, et cetera, I'm sure, in my opinion, it's the facilities probably being used less than it has been in the past, and it's hard to say how that will be in the future as well. I can't hear half this stuff. Keep cutting down. I think Tom is helping Brad. I agree. I think one year is fine. Yeah. I think that's enough for that, right? <laughs> Brad's audio is cutting in and out, so I've invited him here into this room. That so, makes sense. So Brad, they're saying one year on on the um, on this article for the grain. For the grain. And and taking Rosemary's uh, recommendation of just the municipal tax. As long as you let them know before we, yeah, yeah, before yeah. it goes through. Yeah. So I have no problems with that. Uh, the, the, the voters voted on it back in five years ago, I guess it was. Uh, it was uh, put through as all the property tax. If uh, this year you can't really do it on a floor vote again because um, so yeah, I don't have any trouble with this, but you got to take a bunch of grains, you know, before we, we do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before we take and drop that on them. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it municipal property tax exempt for a period of one year. Thank you, Tom. Okay, everybody got that? Yep. Anything else on this? Anything else on this? Nope. Uh, I'm sorry, John. Half stuff you were talking to half the stuff you were talking about i didn't take <laughs> catch um but uh i'm fine with the buy down as far as the uh, paying off the loans okay um the uh, uh what i want to say the uh you get it down to two percent um i just don't want to take in uh and end up uh you know shoot myself in the foot on this one here. Uh, the usual, uh, historically it's been about a two and a half percent increase every year. So 2% isn't too bad. Uh, if Diane's comfortable buying it down to 400,000 on the rainy day fund, I can't see any problem with it. She's the one that's gonna live with it. Yeah, uh, well, we got to, we, we, you guys don't need to have a motion on this, right? This is just something I'll get with Rosemary. And, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there's a final budget. We don't need to do that. There's a, con there's a, there's a con concurrence with this, so. Yeah. Okay. We'll let it go. Um, what else was there on this? Uh, Do we have to have it done before the 18th or can we vote on, on the 18th? Rosemary told me we have to vote on it on the 18th. But so you, you guys need to finalize your budget before the 18th. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, we're close enough. If we can find that percentage point in the police department or, you know, in the, in the budget um, by next meeting, I think, I mean, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but for me personally, you know, we could get two two percent. I'm good. I'm good for, for voting. Um, but the next meeting, next select board meeting, would be the 18th. So I, I I would like for you guys to approve it before the 18th. I would too. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to, be, I don't want to get caught on the 18th. Um, what uh, when uh, when do you think you can get the? Uh, 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 by Friday, you guys will have something from us. Excellent. 
Okay, so what do we meet on Monday? Well, on Monday, um, cause isn't there um, a utilities meeting? Yeah, is there? Public I also have a meeting with the fire department Monday, so. Tuesday? Tuesday works. What Hours? time? Um, six. Yep, that's good. That's good for me too. Colin? Make it work. Justin? He's shaking his head yes. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so Tuesday at six, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Good night. Have a good Have night. Have a good evening. You too. See you guys.